I've been beating around the bush for too long. I'm just going to dive right into the deets. You come for the deets. I'm going to give you the deets. The good, the bad, and the ugly of Marvel Midnight Suns. Thank you. Hi. Uh oh. Also, I would just love to say that I'm just getting started on YouTube, so be sure to hit that sub and that like, and make make this, I almost call myself a little boy, I'm almost 24 years old, make me happy. <laughs> the plot of this game, I'm going to sum it up to you in the most Schneider way I can think of, and just, just give it to you straight, how I see it, okay? Your mom, Lilith is a demon and she's a bitch and you're dead but the midnight suns and the caretaker bring you back and they're like hey your mom's back and she's being a bitch so we need you back and can you help us and you're like yeah i can do that you are in charge of the hunter that's you you're the hunter you're a legendary demon slayer i like where this is going just give me a little time here, and I can whip up some pretty fun toys. How about we give Hydra a taste of their own gamma-powered medicine for a change? My guy got such a dumper, man. You have to assemble and control a group of superheroes, supernatural people. And with that, you have to take on apocalyptic-level threats. End of the world, etc., etc. We've We've heard it a million times by now. Thus starts the Midnight Suns. Thank you. I'm going to start with what I enjoyed about this game because I think that there are certain elements that they really nailed with this game and that being gameplay but more so the combat of the game. I think it was an interesting idea to make this game a tactical RPG card game. Uh, I ended up being really gripped by the combat actually because it makes you focus super hard on what you're doing and think about the moves that you're trying to execute. Because it is so easy to flub up moves and then just get massacred and overwhelmed by Hydra and whatever else you face in this game. So it really makes you dial in and have to like use big brain moves. If you aren't using strategy in this game and are just throwing random darts at a board, you are going to get absolutely piled. The combat is arguably the best aspect of this game. And if the combat wasn't so crisp and fun and mesmerizing to just watch play out with the different battle moves and stuff i honestly don't know if i would have made it as far in this game each battle feels significantly different from the last you can perform heroic moves using the environment around you so if there's like a little raised platform you can spend heroic points to like jump off of it do like a slash ko thing looks super cool you can also have like you can also use like this whip, and if there's barrels placed around the environment, you can throw guys into explosive barrels and just have them explode. That's also a good time. Um, me personally, my favorite move out of this whole game is I use Doctor Strange, and I pick up a rock, and then I just I just throw it at a dude's head, and then they die, and that's that's my favorite. I actually like the characters. I thought each hero felt distinct with their personality and with the gameplay of their individual moves and whatnot. Granted, some of the characters suck and are annoying, but that's, that's just Marvel, baby. That, that happens. Sound and visual effects. The animations of each move that plays out during combat is, like I said before, mesmerizing. Each move looks different, or each move is unique in its own way and every time i watch these moves play out during battle it it feels cinematic like you're watching a movie i'm about to clap these guys the combat oh. animations are slick 
I also played this on the PS5. So the haptic feedback on the controllers, I can actually feel through my hands every time my squad is kicking Hydra ass. And the sound effects, like the music, the theme music was, gets me jacked up. The theme music is amazing. Um, and the sound effects in general, like when you're doing different like explosions and like punching sound effects and stuff, like it's crisp. It is crispy. I like. Okay, with that being said, now we gotta dive into the bad of the game. I'm going to start with just stating performance issues. I wasn't aware of how bad it was going to be as soon as the game dropped, but I bought it on Steam on my PC, and the performance was just terrible. I was getting terrible frames. The game was crashing. I honestly thought it was my PC. After that didn't work, I ended up buying it on my PS5, and that also wasn't working for a little bit. So I took to Twitter, and I was freaking out on Twitter. And then, you know, they sorted their stuff out. And then finally after, I'd say like an hour or two, I was able to play the game. So that's good. But for the most part, the, there's performance issues with this game. And I think it's still evident as of right now, but they'll sort that out, I'm sure. It takes forever to get started. And I'm not even exaggerating. Cutscene after cutscene after cutscene with dialogue and a lot of dialogue and, and more dialogue. And... It's pretty frustrating and it can be overwhelming. It takes so many hours to finally get introduced to the numerous gameplay systems in this game. Questionable gameplay. So when I read that this was a tactical card RPG Marvel game made by XCOM creators, I was like, holy shit, this game is going to be amazing. Like the potential is sky high. This game felt more like a superhero friendship manager simulator. If you know what I mean. The story should be pushing you with urgency to save the world, but instead the game is like, hey, you wanna you wanna go hang out poolside with Tony? Or you wanna go paint pictures with Captain Marvel in the forest? It's like, um I just wanna throw a rock at a dude's head and concave skulls, man. Like I I can't really be bothered with this right now. But hey, I mean that's just me. I'm sure there are other people that, that type of stuff sounds appealing to because i mean it does sound cool F superhero friendship manager simulator definitely appeals to some people but to me i wanted violence and or a good dialogue or storyline to keep me chugging along through the game and i was kind of rough for me which brings me to the next bad thing being dialogue and i'm a marvel fan so i mean i wasn't expecting them to spin gold out of this script but I mean, oh my god, the script was just ultra cheesy. I hate the word cringe because it's overused, but it was it was pretty cringe. It just seemed half cooked or like Marvel fan fiction writing. Like it wasn't dog water. It wasn't terrible, but it had me yearning for more, you know? It's just I don't know. My expectations were kinda high. Maybe I snubbed myself. But I don't think so. I mean the voice the voice acting was pretty good, and I liked the voice acting side of it, but it's just what was actually coming out of the characters' mouths, I just, I didn't really feel connected to, and I just, I couldn't care, to be honest. Cutscenes, cutscenes, cutscenes. For 2022, cutscenes should not be looking like some shit that came straight out of 2012. It really took me out of it when I saw how blurry and weird these scenes were rendered. But the actual gameplay though, everything seems fine. And in battles, it runs smoothly. But anything outside of that is pretty weird and mad looking. Why the fuck were those guys walking like well, that? The and the character models just seem off to me for some reason. Like the guys, why are they wearing such tight clothes? Literally every single one of them is just stuff in their snossages and some skinny jeans. So I was a little, I was a little, whoa, about that. And the facial expressions were also weird, but it just seemed off to me. 
Another thing was the running animation. I can't put my finger on it, but the running animation, it it looks weird. <laughs> it, just, it looks weird, man. I feel like they were just finalizing things and they were like, we don't got a choice. We got to just put this game out there with the, the state that it's in and just see what happens. And with all of that being said about this game, with the weak points being endless cutscenes, graphics being weird, dialogue being kind of poopy, and just overall lacking elements. Um, the strong points of this game being gameplay, sound and visual effects, and voice acting seem to actually redeem this game for me. Gameplay is genuinely fun and challenging. So if you are able to make it past the dodgy graphics, the bad looking cutscenes that seem to never end, weird gameplay mechanics, and the cheesy dialogue, then you might just be rewarded with a game that ends up being one of the best games you've ever played. Overall, I rate Midnight Suns 7.1 out of 10. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button. Please stick around. I am about to put out videos at least once a week on my channel. All in all, I hope you guys enjoyed. This is my first video review. I know it's not super polished or written out super good, but I did what I could.